Okay, this is my tip of the day video, so I'll try to keep it short. And we're going to look at contact bounce in mechanical switches. Now, if you're a student and you're just getting into digital logic, you're probably going to run into this problem sooner or later. So you have a push button switch and you're feeding that into a circuitry. It could be a digital logic circuit, it could be a microcontroller. And you want to increment a counter or trigger it and interrupt or change a menu selection on a display. And when you press the button, it's erratic and intermittent. It's not working properly. So I have a D flip flop and it's wired in toggle mode or divide by two. So every time I press the push button, it's going to toggle this LED. So we're going to have a look. There's no bounce circuit. It's just directly fed into this uh, digital logic circuit. So we'll, we'll toggle the LED and it failed right there. I failed again. On, off, on. There it failed again. So you can see we're getting bounce on the switch and it's, it's, it's causing the circuit to be erratic. So when a student sees that, he says, okay, it's contact bounce. So the next step is to look at some debounce circuits. Okay, here are two common switch debounce circuits and they work very well. I use them a lot. Now you have to pick the right resistor and capacitor because there is a RC time constant involved. You can see the resistor and capacitor on both of them. And then it's fed into a Schmidt trigger inverter. And then you have your clean output. So here's a switching diagram. So we start off, we press the button and we get some bounce. And there's going to be a delay, and here's our output after the bounce is stopped. And then it goes along, and then when we release, here's our release. There's going to be a delay until the bounce stops, and then she's going to come down. That's going to be our clean pulse. So there's going to be a little bit of delay on the, on the push and on the release. Now this circuit, same sort of idea when you press the button, but now we're going to get no delay. It's going to go high right away, but at the very end on the release, we're going to get a little bit of a delay. So those are the two circuits and you have to get the right combination of R and C to make the circuits work properly. Okay, here's a better way to debounce a switch using an RS flip-flop. And I made one using two NAND gates, which are cross-coupled. So we don't have to worry about an RC time constant. There's no resistors or capacitors involved. But there's one catch. We have to use a single pull double throw switch. And so here's our output. So there's no delays. So on our first press contact, output's gonna go high. And on our first release of the switch, output's going to go low. So that's going to be our clean output. So we don't have to worry about time delays. But there's even a better circuit than this, simpler than this, which uses an RS flip-flop. And we'll have a look at that next. Okay, so this is the final circuit that we're going to have a look at. So this is probably the simplest deep bound circuit that you'll ever find. So I'm going to build it and put it on the breadboard and we'll check it out. So it's a 4050 non-inverting buffer with a resistor from the output to the input and that forms an RS flip-flop. And we're going to drive it with this single pull double throw switch. It's made by Greyhill. The part number is 39-261. Now if you don't have a 4050 chip, you could use a 4081 AND gate and connect the two inputs together and put the resistor from the output to the input and that will also work as a RS flip-flop. Okay, I got my 4050 buffer chip mounted on my breadboard. And here's my feedback resistor that's turning one of the buffers into an RS flip-flop. And here's my push button switch. It's a single pole double throw. And that's feeding the 4050. And the output of the 4050 is feeding the 4013. That's a D flip-flop. And it's wired up as a divide by two or toggle. So every time I press the push button, it's going to toggle this LED. So I'll give it a try. So it's going to be clean. It won't be erratic because there's no bounce. So it works out very well. Now when you're using CMOS logic, it's good to tie all the unused inputs either high or low. I'm not doing that here, so there's less confusion. And this circuit will run on 5 volts or 3.3 volts. So next we're going to have a look at the schematic diagram again and see how this circuit works. Okay, so let's check out how this circuit works. So when I press down on the push button, we're going to get 5 volts into the input of the buffer. The output will be 5 volts, and that's going to be fed back on itself, so this will latch. It's like a dog catching its tail. So it will be latched high. Even if this contact bounces, if it lifts up a bit, this is still going to be 5 volts because it's holding itself on. Now when we release the push button, we're going to get a ground into the input. at zero. We'll get a zero in output, and that's going to be fed back. So now we're going to have a low. So that's how the circuit works. It's like RS flip-flop, but we need a, a single pole double throw switch, push button switch, for this to work. 
Okay, if you're a student and you're designing a circuit with a push button, you probably want to use a single pull, single throw, tactile switch, push button. They're easy to get. But when you're designing your debound circuit and nothing seems to work, and you're trying to figure out what's going on, it could be your circuitry, your debound circuitry, or it could be the circuit you're driving, you don't know, then you could build this circuit because it's guaranteed to be uh, free of bounce, and then you could use it for troubleshooting. So that's my tip of the day.